Hello, Flashmix72 here with a new video, and this time I'm going to show you how to solve the regular 3x3 Rubik's Cube. Now, in this video, we will be mainly focusing on the first two layers, and in my next video, which the link is in the description, there will be how to solve the last layer. Now, before you actually start to solve a Rubik's Cube, you need to be familiarized with some rotation. Now, this notation is pretty simple and can be learned yourself. It kind of teaches you yourself. So, if you see me holding the cube with the yellow facing towards us and the red on the top, yellow will be classified as front or F. Red will be classified as top or U for upper. That will be classified as right or R for right, L for left, D for down, and B for back. So if I say R, that means you turn the right face once clockwise. If I say R prime, it means turn the right face once anti-clockwise. If I say R2, it means turn the right face twice in any direction. So, now that you're all clear with the notation, there are three types of pieces you will need to know about. There's a centerpiece, this one's yellow, that one's blue, that one's orange, that one's green, that one's red, and white. Now for this I will be using a stand, well not standard, but the traditional colours of a Rubik's Cube, which is yellow, white, red, orange, blue, and green. Now, in this cube and many other cubes, yellow is opposite white and always will be. Red is opposite orange and always will be. And blue is opposite green and always will be. The reason for this is that you cannot transfer there to there. I mean, sure, you can get a green piece there. But that's not that piece. There are center pieces, edge pieces, which are these ones, and corner pieces. A center piece cannot be transferred into an edge piece, nor a corner piece. A corner piece cannot be turned into any other piece. Each piece has a definition. Good way to remember this centers only have one color. Edges have two, and corners have three. So now we can get on to the first step, which is making a cross. So before we do anything, we have to isolate it. That means that there's only one green... Oh, well, well, first you have to pick a color to start on, actually. I will pick white. So first, this is a really easy step that you don't need any tutorial on. It's basically <coughs> sorry. It's basically to make so there's only one white on the white face. The center. Now we have to look around the cube for a white edge piece. That's there, 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 or there. And we're looking anywhere. Here's one. Now we look at the face it's on. It can either be on the top left, bottom, or right. We want it on the left or right. If there's one on one of these sides, pick it. Now, that, we connect it straight away, so we connect it. Then we refer to the other color on the edge piece. And we match that to its center. So now we paired our two whites and we paired the two greens. So now I will be finding another one. Here's one. Now, things become a little different. We can only do the step where we put it straight on the top for our first one. 
for our second one, we put it on the bottom, on the very bottom layer. Here it is. We do refer to the other color. It's red, so we match it. So the white red is underneath the red. Then we put it on the top. Now I see we've made a nail shape. We want to be aiming for a cross. So now, yes, there's none on the sides, but here is one. It's on the top. So we put it on one of the sides. Now we can put it on the left or right side. Now whatever side you put it on, it'll always be under the one of them. It'll be under an empty column. An empty column is where there's no white on that column, no white edge pieces. So if we put it on the left, yeah, it's in an empty column because there are no white pieces there that are worth keeping. So now there would be no use putting it on the bottom and matching it. Because as you can see, it's already matched. If I were to put it on the bottom and turn it around until it matched, it's already been matched. So then I would put it on the top. Now I've got here. Now where's our last one? Here it is. It's on the side. Now do notice how it's not under an empty column. So we have to make it under an empty column. Please do bear in mind that this does mess up our harmony of those being the same colours. But we'll fix that. So we do this. We put it under an empty file. We put it on the bottom. We put the harmony back, so that they're the same colour. And now, we can look at that. Now we can refer, we can move it, we can match it, we can align it with fellow members of the cross. Now we have made a cross. Now we are aiming for the corners. So if you have any corners already, um, that's good, unless, of course, the corner is incorrect, for example, that, that corner, yeah, it's there, but that's not correct. If that was correct, that would be blue and that would be orange, so it's not correct. If you have any corners that aren't correct, you can get rid of them, put them away. Now, the way to do this is pretty simple. So let's say you have a corner here and it's not correct because that's meant to be orange and that's meant to be green. So what we do is we notice that this is on this ring. Now we want to be able to spin that ring without messing up our cross. So what we do is we turn it down. So now we can spin the ring that it's on without messing up this cross. So we just move it away and bring that back up. So notice we've gotten rid of the corner, I'll do it again. We move it down so that it can be spun freely. Move it away and bring that back up. <laughs> and bring it back up. Now, now we must find a corner piece. Now these corner pieces should ideally be there or there. On the left or right. Here's one on the left. Here's one on the right. There's on the left and there's on the top. They're both called the top because they're not actually important. So let's pick this one. It's on the left. So since corner pieces now have three colours, remember when we were doing the edges? We looked at the other colour. In this case, we'll be looking at both of the other colours. In the, our case, is red and blue because we're aiming for white. We don't need the white. We just notify red and blue. Now we rotate that bottom face until our white piece is in between the red face and the blue face. Now after doing this step, it can either be on the left side or the right side of this face. It doesn't matter what this face is, in my case it's blue. In that case it's green, but that doesn't really matter. All we know is that it's underneath the white, which is what we're aiming for. Now, if it's on the left, what we do is we rotate the top, the, uh, the front face, once anti-clockwise. That would be an F prime move because we're moving the front prime once anti-clockwise. 
So you see we misaligned one of these. But first, we match it. So now that it's been matched, we can bring it back up. I'll do it again. So, it's on the left, so we move that one anti-clockwise. We bring that across and bring that up. And now we've successfully placed in a corner correctly. So now we find another one. Here's one. It's a red and green. So we turn it so it's in between red and green. Now remember, it can either be on the right or left. In my other example, it was on the left. In this example, it's on the right. So we turn it this way. We do that, that way. We can move it back. And we've successfully placed in our second corner. Now, here's one. It's a red-green, and it's already in between red-green. Wait, no. Oh, it's orange-green, sorry. I can't see. So we move it so it's in between orange and green. And it's on the left. So, do this. You want it at the top face? Front face. Align it. And bring it up. Now I've successfully placed in our third corner. Now, for this one, you will notice that our last corner is not where it's meant to be. It's here. Now, we want it to be in the left or right, not the top. Now, if it's on the top, it can either be on the right or left. If it's on the left, just do a mirror of what I'm doing. Bring down whatever side it's on. So, if it's on the left, we bring down the left. If it's on the right, bring down the right. Move it to the right. If it's on the left, move it to the left. In my case, it's on the right, so we move it to the right. We bring it back up. Now we've successfully moved it. Now we look. Blue and orange, yes, it's in between blue and orange, and it's on the right. So you do this. This. And this. And if you have followed my instructions, you should have your white face. And the ring around it. Now, for our next step, we'll be doing the middle layer. That's this ring. Now, it's really easy to do. It's really short. It's the shortest of all the steps. And for doing it, we need to notify the bottom color. It's a yellow. We can also know it's yellow by looking at the top color. If the top color is white, the bottom color will be yellow. Now, we have to find a yellow uh, edge piece on the bottom layer. That can be there, 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 or there. That has none of that color in it. So, that one's bad, because it does have yellow in it. That one's good. It doesn't. Let's go with that one. It's an orange blue. So, what we do is we spin that layer around until that color matches with another color like this. So, we may sort of make a T. Then we could look at this color. It's an orange. Now, the our orange face can either be on the left or the right of the face that's towards us. In our case, it's on the right. If it's on the left, just do the opposite of the reverse of what I'm doing. So on the right, we move it away from it. We bring down the right. We bring it back and bring it up. And in that process, you'll notice we misaligned a corner. So if you remember from earlier, we can do that, that, and that. And that didn't work. <laughs> oh yeah, I know why. I made a mistake. Now it worked. <laughs> so I'll just do that again. Here's one with no yellow. It's a green orange. Now it's already aligned. The orange is on the left. So we move it away to the right. We bring this down. We realign. We connect those greens. We bring it up. Now you notice we have messed up. Put it towards you. Remember from earlier? Do this. Oh, that didn't do it either. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I made a mistake. There's a different album. So, sorry. Let's do this again. So we align it, we make it the same. The orange is on the left or right, it's on the left. So we move it away from there, bring that down, 
bring it back and bring it up. Now you see we've moved it away, it's the white's not correct. So for this we do a different algorithm. Instead of doing that, that, and that, instead we do this, this, that, and that. So on the left you just do the inverse. Now here's one, it's a red blue. If you align it, blue is on the right. So move to the left. Bring down the right, bring this back, and bring it up. Now that's here. It's on there. It's on the left. So move to the right. Bring down. Bring back. Bring up. Now here's one. Red green. Let's align it. Green on the left. So move it away from the left. Bring that down. Realign that. And bring it up. It's on the right. So move it to the left. Down, back, and up. So now, if you follow my instructions carefully, you should have the white face and those two rings. So thanks for watching part one of my tutorial on how to solve the 3x3 three three Rubik's Cube and down in the description there should be a link to my second video if not you can just search it up thanks for watching guys um i'll see you later